What's going on on my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And in today's video, I'll be taking a look at the 1992 horror cult classic, Candyman. The Candyman, a murderous soul with a hook for a hand, is accidentally summoned to reality by a skeptic grad student researching the monster's myth. So Candyman was released in 1992, directed by Bernard Rose. I'm not familiar with that director, but Candyman is his best known film. I meant to have this film up and reviewed before the new Candyman came out, but I got sick with COVID. That's why I've been on hiatus for the past week and a half or so. But now I'm starting to feel better. And now here is my review of the original Candyman. So, I was greatly excited to check this film out for the first time. I'm looking forward to seeing the new film whenever I get to see the film. And this Candyman, I would say, is really, really good. I actually greatly dug this film, and this film greatly surprised me in a lot of ways. This film is definitely a lot more artistic than a lot of the slasher films you expect to see. This film definitely has a lot more thought put into the filmmaking and some of the cinematography and even some of the kills in this movie, which is something that I greatly expect. A lot of slasher movies have the bad reputation of not having the most professional budgets or not having the best filmmaking or anything. It's just the filmmakers, the only care that it's put into these slasher movies are mainly how iconic the main slasher character is or how gruesome some of the kills are and that's about it. There's like not much care put into the characters or anything else. But what I really like about Candyman is when I'm invested in our main character, uh, Helen, our grad student played by Virginia Madsen, I thought her story I thought was very gripping throughout. She's a skeptic who doesn't believe in the Candyman but she investigates anyway because she's curious and then gets more than what she bargained for. And then the Candyman is such a fascinating character as well, played excellently by Tony Todd. Which is crazy because you don't see the Candyman until, I'd say about halfway into the movie, we get that iconic scene at the parking garage. and We see that encounter between Helen and the Candyman. And then... The movie just got really crazy from there. The first half was already really good, just the build up to everything. And then once Candyman shows up, the movie was already like right here. Candyman shows up as like boom, because that's when the movie got really good. Because without diving into spoilers, if you haven't seen Candyman, there's a lot of crazy kills that happen. There's a lot of incidents that happen. A lot of accusations are pointed. And you don't know what's actually going on. And then we get the final twist at the end. Which I think recontextualizes the entire movie. To where you think of the entire movie in a completely different way. And I actually love the twist at the end of Candyman. Because it makes the whole movie that much better in my opinion. I think what's interesting about Candyman is I think our two main characters are set up so brilliantly that when you think of these two characters, the way the characters are intertwined, it makes for a very interesting story. That's the best way I can say without diving too deep into spoilers. And I think what's also interesting, because I think it's worth noting, because I saw that the new Candyman did cause some controversy. Some were taken aback by some of the social commentary in that film. Now, I can't comment on that yet as I have not seen the new Candyman as I've been sick. But I have seen the old Candyman. And the movie does have some social commentary in it. Uh, the backstory behind the Candyman uh, was he was part of the slave trade and he was caught in a forbidden romance and he was executed because of that. And then there is a little bit of social talk on racism even in the more contemporary segments in the film but what I respect about the original Candyman is even though there is definitely some social commentary in there it's not done obnoxiously it's not done in a heavy-handed way the social commentary 
is there, but it's there through the actions of the characters. Uh, it's done in the most smart way. It's not there for a character to preach what the director's agenda was or anything like that. It, it's only there to fuel the actions of the characters. And I thought that was a much more smarter way of doing, I think, much more mature aspects in the story and doing it smartfully to allow the audience to think about what is actually going on. And that's something I respect about this original Candyman movie. Now, there are some subplots in Candyman. I don't know if it needed to fully be there. The more I thought about this one, I'm not the biggest fan of the subplot with Helen's husband and whether he cheated on her. That subplot I did think was unnecessary. I'm not going to lie. But to be honest, I actually did enjoy the film overall. The movie did not overstay its welcome. The movie breezes by. It's only an hour and a half. I think the movie did a great job with its storytelling. It did a great job with our two main characters. I think the tension is great. It's still a great slasher movie. Candyman is already up there as one of my favorite slasher characters. I'd say he's up there with Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Norman Bates. The reason why those characters are up there as some of the best slashers is not only are the movies that they are in so good, and the premises are actually very effective, but the characters are great as well. And Candyman is definitely up there. Candyman's such a fascinating character. Uh, very intense imagery with the hook hand and then the bees that come out of his mouth. If you don't like bees or you're scared of bees or you're allergic to bees, you might be very squeamish over this movie. And I was surprised how gory this movie was too. There's a couple kills where I was like, ooh, that just messed up. Yeah, definitely not for the faint of heart. But I greatly enjoyed Candyman. It's definitely a more artistic slasher film. And I greatly respect it for that. Candyman is such a fascinating movie. It definitely does a lot right. And if you haven't seen this movie, I definitely recommend checking it out. I've heard the new Candyman is more of a sequel. I actually thought it was a remake for the longest time. But it is actually apparently a continuation of the original Candyman. Uh, when I eventually get out of quarantine, I hope to see the new Candyman in theaters and see for myself whether it's a good movie or not. And uh, hopefully it'll live up to the quality of the first Candyman. So for me, I greatly enjoyed the original Candyman, and I'll be giving the original film a four and a half out of five stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting an 84 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of the original Candyman from 1992. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you've seen Candyman, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope y'all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!